we see a lot of information get thrown around in these various transfer periods, especially when it comes to football finances. This includes different facts, figures from various different sources, all of whom have a different take on things and a different reason to have their specific opinion. And it can lead to people being very, very worried about PSR, the Profit and Sustainability Regulations, or as you might know it, FFP, and the various consequences it will have for Leeds United. So, in this video, I'm going to run through the truth about PSR, Leeds United's finances, and whether or not there is any form of penalty coming. I've dived into the numbers, I'm going to try and convey it in a way that makes sense to everyone, and hopefully everyone's on a more understanding footing afterwards. But first, I'd hugely appreciate if you could subscribe. I'm trying to get to 4,000 by the start of the season. I'm hoping I can get there, and I need you with me if I'm going to do so. Cheers. Anyway, to start with, what exactly are the PSR rules? There is an important first note, though. PSR isn't the same thing as cash flow. Cash flow refers to the way that money comes in and goes out of a club's bank account. So, for example, oh, good. Name a more iconic duo than camera failures and recording when you need to be. Um, PSR isn't the same thing as cash flow. PSR refers to the sort of profit and loss on specific things that clubs do. So buying players, selling players, wages, various bits and bobs that surround the playing squad. There are things outside of PSR, so you can spend on the academy, on club infrastructure, on the women's team, for example, outside the remit of PSR, and that will be completely fine. I've just noticed I was looking at the wrong camera. I will get confused a little bit. Sorry about that. I very rarely had to change mid-recording. Um, so when it comes to PSR, clubs report their finances on a three-year rolling basis. So the finances from three years ago will affect your PSR. Now it's just to make sure that one year of losses won't completely ruin you from a PSR point of view. You're permitted certain losses based on your division. So in the Premier League, you're allowed to lose £35 million every single year. In the Championship, that number becomes 13. So in the 21-22 season, for example, Leeds United were allowed to lose 35 million since we're in the Premier League. In 22-23, we were allowed to lose 35. Last season, we were allowed to lose 13 because we were in the Championship, which meant that the sort of PSR limit that we just saw that ended at the end of June meant that we were allowed to lose £83 million over that three-season period. Now, this season, we also have a £13 million limit, but it means that that £35 million from the Premier League season has dropped off. That means that our total now is £35 million from the last season we're in the Premier League, plus two in the Championship, £61 million worth of loss allowed over three seasons. Outside of that, if you lose too much, you're allowed to lose too much in an individual season. But if you lose too much through that, throughout the sort of aggregated accumulated period, that's where you start to get penalties. That's where you start to sort of bump into the issues of points deductions, of like transfer embargoes, stuff like that. So hopefully Leeds United don't fall within that category. And we know a little bit more about our situation as it is at the moment. So our losses in 21-22 were noted down in like recent accounts and were down as 37 million pounds, which is significant. That is huge. That is the peak of Victor Orta spending on what he thought was Premier League talent when it wasn't. Add on to that the fact that in 22-23 we had losses of 34 million pounds. It means that over those two Premier League seasons, we lost 71 million pounds, which is 1 million over the amount that we were allowed to lose in that period. But then again, it's three years of accumulation, and I'm guessing in the first season we were basically fine enough. And when it comes to what happened last year, we don't know yet. We know that last year had unknown amortised fees, so fees for the likes of a Max Fuber, of a Brendan Aronson, of a Rasmus Christensen, will still be being amortised over this period. So we will be basically paying them off in the long term. Even though the cash flow might have gone out, we might have paid it, on the accounts, it's still going out because that's a slightly more sustainable way of managing your losses. However, whilst these are potentially big fees and that could be a problem, we need to remember that we did sell Adams and Sinistera to Bournemouth for a total of £40 million. We did sell Archie Gray for £40 million and that's gone on last season's accounts because the conversation started before the deadline, so we can put it down under that. And there was the Red Bull deal, which was a big commercial deal, which was fantastic. We did also lose a vast amount of TV revenue, something like 
45, 50% of what we would have earned in the Premier League, and that is going to keep falling this season. But with all the losses and gains added up, it means that our losses will fall below £12 million for last season. Because as we have heard from various different journalists and various different sources, the club is still within PSR. So we know that over the last three seasons, it's less than £83 million. That means that over the last two seasons, we have not lost enough money to mean that we've got £15 million worth of losses to play with this season. Now, there will be a further revenue drop because the parachute payment goes down. We will maybe at the end of the season, if we don't go up, be forced to sell some more players because that's the situation championship clubs are in. But we know that that is the situation that we're in at the moment. We've got a bit of losses to play with. Ideally, we can push a little bit more profit in terms of if we do have to sell players. That's why I feel like we didn't sell Jorginho Ruter because when it comes to profit, that would be minimal because we're still amortising his fee. But we'll have to find out, I feel. But what does that mean that the window looks like in front of us? Because we've got some idea of what losses were allowed, so we can, in theory, look at what can happen with that money. And I feel like we might see some more sales potentially to fund further incomings. Because having players on the way in is always key to pushing on to the next level. But in order to fund that when you're in the championship, you need players to go out. And Archie has gone out. Sure, brilliant. But that doesn't go in this year's books. If we do sell someone in this summer window, then that's more money that we are allowed to spend this year because of the way that you amortize transfer fees. If you sell someone, all that money goes into that year, which is great. Fantastic. That year is completely clear. And who knows, we might have even gone down as having made a profit last year. I doubt it. But if we did, brilliant. We might be able to lose a bit more this year. But we still might need to make a sale. There was also a Ben Jacobs tweet on this that I thought was very, very good and detailed. Uh, He said that it was never true that Leeds United needed £100 million in sales before the 1st of July. That was just a sort of made-up number. It wasn't PSR related. It was sort of cash flowy, I think, in terms of what we owed. It was that weird £72 million number that everyone was talking about. That doesn't count towards PSR. That was just sort of cash flow stuff. They will take into account any player that asks to leave should an appropriate offer arrive, but won't have to scramble for sales. This means that when it comes to selling players, we won't be selling players at losses. We won't be in the event that, say, Aronson changes his mind. He signed for Leeds two years ago for £25 million on a five-year contract. That means he's currently worth fifteen million quid on the books, at the very least. If we were to sell him for twelve, that goes down as a three million pound loss. That hurts the financial value of the club, so we won't have to scramble to force those sales in the slightest. In addition to that, we can be fairly flexible on incomings. You can amortize transfer fees because brilliant, fantastic. If you are buying someone and say they've got a four-year contract, like Joe Rodon did, £10 million. You can assign that value as not just being £10 million of a fee this season, but as 2.5 over 4. Which means that if we do sell Crescencio Somerville, which will be pure profit, for £40 million. In theory, you can buy a £200 million player and just amortise that over five years and then at sort of level. Admittedly, you'll still have to pay the £40 million next year, the year after, the year after, so you can't get stupid with it. But in theory, a £40 million sale is worth well more than £40 million if you consider amortisation. There is already potential for a return from Conor Roberts because that has been hinted at by Sam Rodon. I think Conor Roberts replied to the tweet as well, so that says that there might be something going on there. You can't be 100% sure. And the rumours of Callum O'Hare are also not going away. But I feel like with some potentially big sales, with looking at the way that our revenue is going at the moment, because the Red Bull deal is huge and that'll be more than one year, I expect us to not only add quality to the side, but quantity. We'll add good players and we will add depth. But the question that a lot of people will have on their lips is, is there a penalty coming for Leeds United? And the answer is very clear to me, absolutely not. The club has been very, very careful to follow all of the rules consistently and stay, even if we go slightly over the limit of losses, the next year we made sure that we were under the limit so it all balanced out. 
we've been incredibly careful, unlike some clubs who will see that they are breaching FFP rules and go, well, I mean, in the championship we've breached PRS, but why don't we just spend more so we're in the Premier League? We're not doing that because we know that if we don't go up, that's where problems come in. That's where next year there might have to be more sales because then parachute payments drop to, what, 25% of Premier League revenue, which is really bad. It means avoiding the financial penalties, but there is a cost, and the cost is players like Archie Gray, where he's a player that we absolutely adore, but has to go. Ultimately, we will need to focus on intelligent spending in this window, making sure that we spend in a way that is good value for money, gets a lot of quality in through the door, but doesn't risk next season. And that will ultimately decide if we need to have these conversations again next year. But ultimately, I kind of want to know what you think. This has been my explainer on Leeds United's finances, FFP, all that kind of stuff. But I want to know what you think about all of this in the comments down below. Do you understand what the entire stuff is at the moment? Do you understand Leeds' position? Are there any other explainer videos you'd like to see? Because I think for some people, this could be kind of useful. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. You can even become a channel member. That doesn't put you in PRS danger. It's 99p, and all of that will go to charity. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you later. I still think PSR and FFP rules are stupid, by the way. They don't work. I just had to explain them a bit. See you later.